Good morning, Cleveland. You look beautiful today. <clears throat> it was a few years ago, and my friend, uh, friend Todd and I had reached a breaking point. Despite all the talk in the, in the area about supporting young entrepreneurs and brain drain, we were still watching most of our best and brightest of our generation leaving town and heading to other areas of greater opportunity. And this disgusted and it really scared us and it prompted us to really start looking into this situation ourselves and trying to understand what was going on. Um, we started talking to the people that were leaving and actually really looking at the areas that they were headed to and what was it about these places that had the ingredients that amazing entrepreneurs were looking for when they wanted to be starting a company. What we quickly heard back from the entrepreneurs that had left that we were talking to as to why they left was that they felt that Cleveland was a horrible place two years ago to start a company, specifically because nobody really cared about early stage entrepreneurship. So that when you have that idea and you need help the most, you don't know what those next steps are, there was no one here to give the attention and the resources, let alone actually invest into you. It was at that point that Todd and I realized we had to do something. We looked at each other in the eye and we made a promise to each other and to the city that changed our lives forever. We realized that we needed to get obsessed about early stage entrepreneurship. We made the promise that we were gonna spend two years of our lives doing whatever it took to try and create something. We didn't know what we were gonna create at the time yet even, but we wanted to try and create something that would keep these amazing entrepreneurs here in town and actively support them and help them grow. Let's step back and reacquaint ourselves with what really is an entrepreneur because it's a whole different breed of person. And there's been some changes happening in the industry that are pretty exciting. So um, it's easy to get caught up and excited about the romantic side or the fun, cool side of entrepreneurship, especially when we're reading about billion dollar exits to Facebook recently. But I'm here to tell you that entrepreneurship is not usually cool or fun. It actually hurts its raw and its suffering and its struggle. The best representation of entrepreneurship that rings most true to me is this simple line drawing. So from the outsider's perspective, looking into an uh, uh, actual startup, this is what success looks like to them. A simple, logical progression, it, it was easy. But to the founders and the funders and the investors, those that actually took that journey, this is what that actual journey and process looked like. And it's within that squiggle right there, that's entrepreneurship to me. That's what I'm crazy about and that's what I love working with and exploring. It's within that squiggle that marriages are destroyed, friends are lost, <laughs> opportunities are missed. And that's the true struggle, sacrifice and grind right there. It's beautiful. That's what drives the human race forward. And you're literally, entrepreneurs keep throwing themselves through this process knowing that the odds are stacked against them just so that they have the slightest chance that they might be one of the few lucky ones that actually creates a successful startup company. What else do we know about entrepreneurs? They create jobs and vibrancy. Recent Kauffman uh, Foundation studies have shown that for the past 30 years, 100% of net new job growth in the, the entire country are from early stage startup companies. So while large mature companies have been responsible for the destruction of approximately 100 million jobs a year in net aggregate, uh, every year new early stage startups add 300 new jobs to the economy. This is absolutely starting in fact. So as a city or a region, if you want a future and you want vibrancy, if you don't have entrepreneurs, you're in trouble. Perhaps most excitingly is we are truly in an era of the democratization of startups. Never before has one single individual with a vision been able to impact and change so many across the world. Uh, this is thanks to open source technologies, 3D printers, rapid prototyping machines, um, everything that's just really shortening this squiggle. People that properly use these tools and take advantage of the ubiquity and the reach of internet and social media have found that with even just a tiny amount of money, they can now see an idea through to an actual proof of concept. And this has spawned the whole surgence of um, seed capital investment, business incubators and accelerators that are putting in as little as $10,000, $20,000 into amazing entrepreneurs and no longer writing these long 20 page business plans and, and doing this long drawn out process. The process of a startup today is small little experiments, little research, little tests, testing with your market and customers and, and getting to what we call minimally viable products and really seeing if these ideas have legs. So in today's day and age, it's not this complex, you know, formula or anything like that that's needed to get an early stage ecosystem. You really just need uh, a few little variables, a little bit of resources and a, and a conducive ecosystem and early stage entrepreneurship will flourish. It's human nature, we wanna create, we wanna grow. 
So since Cleveland didn't have any of this going on, let's take a quick little tour around the rest of the country to some of the areas that have this figured out and are just attracting entrepreneurs with such tremendous ease. So what are the things that we need to give to entrepreneurs? We know that there needs to be a give back from the successful, mature business community in the form of mentorship and guidance and resources. Entrepreneurs need a creative outlet to showcase what they're doing and connect with each other. Multiple venues each year of just demoing and showcasing. If any of us has been to Austin, we know that these guys do it the best. And it's most important to showcase to each other, but also to get in front of a very vibrant and active early stage investment community. Silicon Valley is the poster child of this, where they have multiple options if you're an amazing entrepreneur with an idea that you can go to to get that investment. Someone's going to take a risk on you to turn that idea into an actual company. And then the rest that's needed is really just spaces that you can allow these communities of creatives to kind of form. And these take a bunch of different shapes. It's vibrant coffee shops like this in Seattle. It's bright, colorful co-working spaces like this that are popping up all over New York City, where multiple companies are sharing space and resources and learning from each other. And it's hacker spaces, which are usually nothing more than a dingy garage or a warehouse where engineers and geeks and nerds get together and hack together things, invent, prototype, and create new ideas and companies. That's all it takes in order to get a vibrant early stage ecosystem. It's not a mystery, it's not rocket science. So why was that escaping Cleveland? In case any of you haven't seen through my thinly veiled ruse here, none of those pictures were Silicon Valley. None of that was Austin. Every single one of those pictures, every one of those hacker spaces, co-working spaces, that's in Cleveland. We have this ecosystem now. Somehow this has sprung up over the past two years. In fact, almost all of those pictures were just taken at our one little location of Launch House. Launch House is the manifestation of that promise that Todd and I made two years ago to the entrepreneurs of Cleveland. So today that promise looks something like a 23,000 square foot mold and asbestos filled abandoned car dealership <laughs> that we fixed up and remediated and is now home to over 100 early stage startups. Every day through those doors is a blend of investors, flip-flop clad entrepreneurs, puppies, it's just this beautiful, vibrant, just early stage ecosystem and family. Within that building, you have everything that you need to turn your idea quickly into an actual company and see if it's got legs. You've got investors, people to design your logo, make your websites, your technology, legal, patent, accounting. What we're doing is really accelerating entrepreneurs through this squiggle here and trying to make it easier on them. Everything within the space is designed for creati uh, creativity. Even the tables and furniture are designed to be drawn on when you have an idea. The cross-pollination and sharing of ideas just flows so freely and this is accelerating the pace and creating a higher caliber of entrepreneur here in town. The appetite to learn is ever present and the willingness of all these members to teach is beautiful. It's literally become a home for the early stage entrepreneurial community here and one of the larger co-working spaces in the Midwest. Our dream of proactively supporting entrepreneurs through this journey has also come to fruition. Through our accelerator, we're investing $25,000 into just ideas from amazing entrepreneurs, putting them through 12-week intensive boot camp programming to just raise the pace and sense of urgency here in town with great results. And we're not the only ones. Other people are starting to get obsessed about early stage entrepreneurship. The owner of our basketball team, Dan Gilbert, he's obsessed about entrepreneurs. He's investing in the early stage. Our universities are rising up to the game. We're really seeing this getting infused back into the mindset of the entire city, which is exciting to see. <clears throat> now, if there's one thing that we actually did that was maybe exciting or amazing, it was the bootstrapping. Anyone else that plays in this space of economic development is usually benefited by um, a nice plush bank account, they've got funding from maybe state or federal and agencies, or you're a successful entrepreneur that's got millions in the bank account. We didn't have that. Still to this day, almost all of our investors have been under the age of 30. So this is a true grassroots, viral growth community effort. Um, so like I said, the one exciting thing that we did as individuals to, was to really figure out how to live without money personally for about two years. And Cleveland is beautiful for that. <laughs> so that takes the shape of a lot of different things. I won't go too into detail. Um, but the, the easy stuff is getting rid of your car, getting rid of your house, literally becoming homeless and living at the office for more than a year. 
literally days and weeks we survived on eating out of a trash can because we would have viewed taking money out of this would have been stealing from the entrepreneurs that we were trying to save here. Any normal person looking in from the outside in would have thought we were crazy, disgusting, and living like animals, <laughs> rightfully so. But um, we took this on and it was rough and painful, but it was the best two years of our lives. We wouldn't have changed anything, and we did that suffering willingly for the city because the city needed this so desperately. And if we had faltered or lost sight of that dream or vision, all of this would have come crashing down. We were part of something bigger. We were part of a movement. We willingly took this on. <clears throat> and the reason why entrepreneurs go through this period of suffer and struggle is because sometimes it starts paying off. And when this started paying off, it was beautiful. The appetite of the entrepreneurial community was so thirsty for some outlet like this in some home that we kept outgrowing the buildings that we were moving into and we had to find bigger and bigger spaces until we found our, our current home here. And then we started seeing the young entrepreneurs really step up to the plate here. And now we're starting to see the faces of young entrepreneurs literally in every industry pushing this city forward from world-class tech design shops to people that are bringing entire new food movements here into town Amazing young entrepreneurs that are creating life-saving medical innovations here. Amazing young techies that are redefining how we're going to invest into companies in the future with uh, mechanisms like crowdfunding. People that have guaranteed that we put Cleveland on the front edge, the bleeding edge of the urban agriculture movement. Young people that are redefining how we deliver nutrition to people in this day and age. Amazing techies that have stayed here in Cleveland are redesigning how we create companies, technology, and brand companies. And in the home of rock and roll, amazing entrepreneurs that are obsessed with how do we deliver live music experience to the rest of the world. And this is just a small fraction of the entrepreneurs I'm so lucky to work with every single day. Are there any entrepreneurs out here in the room today? I want you all seriously to stand up right now. We'll give them a little hat. Please stand up, anybody that's an entrepreneur and stay standing. Please stay. All right, Cleveland, please stay standing. Please stay standing. Look around the room, Cleveland. This is literally your most valuable natural resource. And are we treating that accordingly? Especially when we think that this natural resource is fully equipped and entitled to get up and out of here if there's some other region that's showing them more love or giving them more resources. We need to start thinking as a city, how do we support the work of these individuals here? And how do we create more of them? press, bloggers, media, anybody that's got a voice, we need evangelists for this movement. These are the most exciting stories that are going on in this city, in the Midwest. Get behind us and celebrate this, get excited. Any business professionals or anybody uh, that's a service provider, can you get excited? Can you provide some mentorship to these individuals? Can you offer lower cost services to any of these individuals to increase the success rates of these individuals and entrepreneurs? Uh, we need to become more willing and open to become early beta testers and adopters of the technologies that are being created here. We need to be excited across the board as a city about this movement. Our civic and our foundations. There's more money in our foundations in Cleveland than I believe any other city. And that money was put into those coffers back when Cleveland was the epicenter of worldwide entrepreneurship. It was the way we did things here in Cleveland. If there's ever a time that we need to start thinking about using a little bit of that money to put back into making sure that Cleveland becomes a city like that again, now is that time. So in closing, Cleveland, I've fallen for you. I absolutely love making cities and making new things here in Cleveland more than anything else. And I look forward to doing that for many, many years to come. I just ask that all of you get excited about this movement and if you truly enjoy living in an emerging renaissance city again where you can actually impact change, I please ask you to get excited about these entrepreneurs as well and make a change. Thank you, Cleveland. I love you.